I'm Carol Walker and in the next hour, two men die in a crash on the M1. Good afternoon and welcome to BBC News. The former boss of Marks and Spencer, Lord Rose, has launched the campaign for Britain to stay in the European Union. He said leaving the EU would be a leap in the dark and argued that remaining in the EU makes Britain wealthier and safer. David Cameron has promised a referendum on the issue to be held by the end of 2017. Our political correspondent Chris Mason reports. Well, UKIP's only MP, Douglas Carswell, joins us now from Westminster. Thanks very much indeed for talking to us. So Hi there. those who want to stay in have got uh, quite a line-up. And Lord Rose is a respected character. He's saying that it's patriotic to stay in Europe. It's going to be very difficult for you to argue against that, isn't it? I've got two different campaigns scrapping amongst one another, and that's going to undermine your cause, isn't it? Well, think, think that through. One of those out campaigns is going to be properly recognised and isn't it going to be confusing for people out there if they've got two different campaigns with two different pictures no one knows who's going to be recognised as the official campaigners to leave see what David Cameron gets from this renegotiation before they make their minds up shouldn't you be simply waiting to find out what is on the table before you gear up for these campaigns some breaking news. The Metropolitan Police say they are going to withdraw their officers from outside the <coughs> Ecuadorian embassy. Coming to us in the last few minutes, uh, the American dentist who killed Zimbabwe's Cecil the Lion. Three men have gone on trial at Woolwich Crown Court, accused of plotting knife attacks in the UK and supporting the group known as Islamic State. Our Home Affairs correspondent Daniel Sanford has been in court. Caroline Hawley. Three men have gone on trial at Woolwich Crown Court in South London, accused of plotting to carry out a terrorist attack in the UK using knives. The prosecution alleges they were inspired by calls from Islamic State militants. Nadia Ali Said, Yusuf Shah Said and Hasib Hamayoun all deny planning acts of terrorism. Daniel Sanford sent us this report. Well, our reporter Daniel Bircher is also at Woolwich Crown Court. And Daniel, just bring us up to date with what we've been hearing this afternoon. Just some news coming in from the official receiver who's just announced that the Coke ovens and blast furnace at the Savaharia Steel Industry UK Limited Redcar Steel Mill, this is the SSI Redcar Steel Mill, are to be closed. And this is after no viable offers were received from potential buyers. Yes, of course, the uh, site has been uh, mothballed and around... 1,700 jobs are likely to be lost at the site at uh, Redcar on Teesside. Um, there have been concerns that the company's not been paying into workers' pension funds. The government has come under pressure to do more to rescue the steel plant. It said it's trying to help the workers there affected. But the uh, news this afternoon is that the coke ovens and blast furnace at the SSI plant are going to be closed after no viable offers were received from potential buyers. Mark Lowen in Ankara. Two RAF personnel are amongst five people killed in a helicopter crash in Afghanistan. The Ministry of Defence says the crash was an accident, not the result of insurgent activity. It happened while their Puma helicopter attempted to land at a NATO training base in Kabul. Our correspondent Andy Moore at RAF Benson in Oxfordshire has more. Well, joining us now from Westminster is the Pensions Minister, Baroness Altman. Thank you very much for talking to us. We heard uh, one of those who's looking at this opportunity describing it as a gamble. She's right, isn't she? It's for the Treasury to get some extra money in because lots of people will spend the money uh, and then won't live long enough to reap the rewards. The problem with this is you've got to have, as Simon Gompertz was pointing out there, more than £20,000 to put down in the first place. How many people do you think, how many pensioners are actually going to have those sorts of sums that they will want to invest in their pension pot. Another complication, though, isn't it? People facing retirement, approaching retirement, are now faced with a myriad of choices, and many people will be saying that they simply don't know where is the best place to put their money. Thank you very much for your honesty. Thanks, Carol. Now it is fast approaching half past three. Let's catch up with the weather prospects and cross over to the other side. Hello, this is BBC News with Carol Walker and Simon McCoy. Just after half past three, our headlines this afternoon. 
Sport now and let's catch up with a, a full bulletin from Chris, who's at the BBC Sports Centre. Hello. Please. Thank you, Alice. Now, two British writers are amongst the six international authors vying for this year's Man Booker Prize. The award for the best fiction book will be announced at a ceremony in London tomorrow. BBC Arts Night has caught up with all the shortlisted authors and we're bringing you those interviews. Today it's The Fisherman by Chigozi Obiyama. That was Chigozi Obiyama. And for more on the Man Booker Award, you can see Ben Ockrey's Arts Night on the BBC iPlayer. And the awards ceremony will be covered live on BBC News at 9.30 tomorrow evening. Now, though, time for the weather. Let's cross the newsroom. Three men have gone on trial at Woolwich Crown Court in South London, accused of plotting to carry out a terrorist attack in the UK using knives. The prosecution alleges they were inspired by calls from Islamic State militants. Nadia Ali Syed, Yusuf Shah Syed and Hasib Hamayoun all deny planning acts of terrorism. Daniel Sanford has sent us this report. Well, our correspondent Daniel Bircher has been following the latest developments at Woolwich Crown Court. The Turkish Prime Minister has said the investigation into the bomb attacks on a peace rally in Ankara are focused on the so-called Islamic State group. He said the attacks were an attempt to influence the general election, but that it would go ahead as planned in three weeks' time. The authorities now say 97 people were killed in the bombings on Saturday. But pro-Kurdish activists put the figure much higher. Our correspondent Mark Lowen is in Ankara. Mark Lowen in Ankara. It's uh, just after quarter past four. Our headlines this afternoon. Let's get some more now on Julian Assange. Scotland Yard say police officers have stopped guarding the Ecuadorian embassy in London, where he took refuge in 2012 to avoid extradition to Sweden over sex allegations. The Met says it remains committed to executing his arrest warrant and presenting him before court. It would be easier for him to leave the embassy should he choose to do so, but even if he managed to do so without being spotted, his options are pretty limited. Thank you very much. Two RAF personnel are amongst five people killed in a helicopter crash in Afghanistan. The Ministry of Defence says the crash was an accident and not the result of insurgent activity. It happened as the Puma helicopter attempted to land at a NATO training base in Kabul. Our correspondent Andy Moore at RAF Benson in Oxfordshire has more. Andy Moore at RAF Benson in Oxfordshire. Time now to get an update on the weather. Hello, this is BBC News with Carol Walker and Simon McCoy. At exactly half past four, our main story is this afternoon. Sport now, and let's go over to the BBC Sports Centre and join Azzy. Hello. Bring evidence uh, from senior executives of VW talking about the emissions scandal. I should just tell you some breaking news we've had in the last few minutes that Tom Watson, the Labour deputy leader, has refused to apologise for raising allegations against the late Leon Britton. Uh, he has said instead that MPs should examine their consciences. Now, uh, he's had pressure from a number of Conservative MPs who have said he should apologise. And, in fact, the Prime Minister today uh, said that uh, Mr Watson himself should examine his conscience uh, after making uh, sex abuse allegations against the former Conservative Minister, Lord Britton, public in the Commons. Uh, more on that when we get it. And with Hugh at five o'clock, who is coming up next, but that's not for a weather update. Let's cross the newsroom and get that from Louise Lear. Louise.